TV KPM Greetings to the Honourable Judges and my dear listeners. My name is Esther and the topic I am going to speak about today is doubt. Ladies and gentlemen, what comes to your mind when you hear the word doubt? If you scratch your head, aha, that's doubt. Doubt comes when a person feels uncertain or lack of conviction. Some people say that doubt is just a normal experience of the human being. But have you ever wondered about the unexpected dangers of doubt? Doubt usually starts small. Gradually, it grows into something debilitating, which can lead to problems with anxiety and depression. Doubt is dangerous. Do you agree? I'm sure all of us are afraid of thieves who come and steal our things. However, do you know that there is a thief in our minds that is after our hopes and dreams? That thief is doubt. If you see doubt, stay away from it. Doubt is a killer and it has killed and destroyed the dreams of many people. Doubt comes in many disguises and will leave you lost and insecure about yourself. I'm sure all of us did experience doubt before, right? As for me, I still remember the day of my mathematics exam when I was fully prepared and ready to ace it. However, all oh, my confidence and enthusiasm drained out of me halfway through the test. I could neither understand nor solve several of the questions. I started panicking and soon doubt got the best of me. A little voice yelled, you won't be able to finish it on time. Stop trying, you might fail. I was in despair. Luckily, I managed to finish it on time. However, I made many careless mistakes because I was doubting my capabilities instead of focusing on the exam. Since then, my perception towards myself changed. I never doubted my own capabilities again. I'm always willing to give myself a chance to try new things as opportunity never knocks twice. So I'm sure you could guess the reason why am I here. By clearing all my doubts makes me a more confident and positive thinking student. Besides gaining more experience and knowledge. My dear audience, as human beings it is all right to have flaws and inadequacies. As the saying goes, no one is perfect. Even though we are not perfect, or we might feel that we are a failure and not good enough. Each of us is given a unique gift, a talent, which makes us special from the rest. It is about time that we should change our mindset. Life is not always about competing against each other. Instead, it is about complementing each other. Do not feel upset if you fail. Take it as an opportunity to improve yourselves. Right now, I want all of you to tell the person next to you, you are special just the way you are. You are special just the way you are. From now onwards, never let doubt be given the power to determine neither your success nor future. A wise man once said that our job in this life is not to shape ourselves into someone ideal or imagine who we ought to be, but 
to find out who we already are and become one. Hence, we should always remind and encourage each other to love and accept ourselves. Stop doubting and start building confidence. Clear all your doubts and move on confidently. Only then, we will learn to truly appreciate our lives. With that, I thank you. Dede TV KPM Dede TV KPM Good afternoon everyone. My name is Tanisha and I'm from SK Bukit Damansara. My topic is about crowdsourcing medical research. Did you know that as of May 2020, the oldest known living person is Kane Tanaka of Japan? Aged 117 years, 4 months and 28 days. Goodness, I'm only 12 years old and have 88 more years to go before 100. It's amazing to hear that there are many more Centurions living today than ever before. It could be due to genes, diets or even love. But it's undeniable that breakthrough in modern healthcare services have provided a lot to make this happen. Numerous studies are ongoing to prevent and cure diseases, help pandemics, reverse devastating injuries, and overall transform how we can remain healthy for the longest possible time. Medical advancement is playing a big role in the future of healthcare. Game-changing inventions and ideas are reshaping the way we take care of our health. It's so transformative that more often than not, what we witness in our favorite medical drama shows have become our new reality. Some examples are 3D printings of human organs, wearable biotrackers, and even breath-based cancer tests. But I like to highlight a specific trend called crowdsourcing medicine and how it has been used to help health in many settings. Crowdsourcing shifts medical research from a closed environment to an open collaboration between the public and researchers. Crowdsourcing allows a large group of individuals to participate in medical research through innovation challenges, hackathons, and related activities. I think it's best to illustrate my point to a short story, a true story inspired by a patient of me, Carly, courtesy of Proud Men. Like me, Carly was a vibrant free teenager until she mysteriously fell ill. She has been suffering with this serious medical condition for almost three years. She has seen at least two dozen doctors, she has countless medical tests, and rising medical bills, but still had no explanation for her crippling symptoms. Her condition deteriorated so rapidly that she could barely get out of bed. This caused her brother Jared to explore crowdsourcing medical research. During the early testing of this platform, Jared had submitted Carly's anonymized case information to the crowd to test the system. More than 300 people participated. In just three days, the crowd could figure out what was causing Carly's agony. It's called fragile associated primary ovarian insufficiency, which was a rare genetic mutation which could only be found in just one out of 15,000 people. After knowing this, all it took was a hormone patch, which effectively eliminated all of Carly's symptoms in less than a month. Sounds like a medical episode in Grey's Anatomies, right? But miracles like this happened and all it took was a platform to host innovation to help Carly to live. In conclusion, crowdsourcing is and will continue to be the pivotal force in accelerating the healthcare system adoption to the ever-evolving world of innovation and technology. But according to Global Health, we are at the very early stages of this development. I hope that this crowdsourcing will help cure the COVID-19 pandemic too. But time will tell all of us the 
progress. Thank you. A very good morning to the honorable judges. It is an honor to be here with you today. Now, have you ever watched the movie Life of Pi? Even though I've watched it dozens of times, I will always watch it when it comes on TV. Again and again, the main character, Pi, is stranded in the ocean with the fiercest tiger after losing his whole family. Pi is grateful to the tiger for being his companion, even though the tiger will try to harm and eat him. Throughout this movie, I have learned to be appreciative and grateful from Pi. According to Douglas Wood, a famous American writer, the heart that gives thanks is a happy one, for we cannot feel thankfulness and sadness at the same time. I mean, who doesn't want to be happy, am I right? If you learn to appreciate all the little things in your life, happiness is all yours. Appreciation. That's the topic for today. Before I go any further, I would like to give you a glimpse of my topic. Appreciation is a gratitude feeling for something either done or received. Appreciation turns what we have into enough. It makes us feel contented and full of positive mind. There are many things and many people we can appreciate in our lives. First and foremost, our parents. They should be the first people we appreciate in our lives. Father and mother, they bring us to this fascinating world. They give us the basics of living, such as a loving shelter, nutritious food, fancy clothes, and many more. They raise us since we are young. They nurture us with love and care. They also help us go through those obstacles in all our lives. Now, what if I were to say, you are in danger? I am sure our parents will protect us under any circumstances. They never leave us alone and put us in danger. Hence, we should always appreciate and be grateful to our parents. Now, I have a question. Who, during your time as a child, appreciated your teachers? Please raise up your hand. I see a delay in you raising up your hand, so I'm going to assume you do remember how it was like. Yes, teachers giving you billions upon billions of homework, giving you homework that you don't even know how to do. But let's face it, our teachers were the ones who shaped and molded us into who we are today. They were the ones who got us ready for the real world. So, it is undeniable that teachers play a very big role in our growth and development as a child. So, we should always appreciate and be grateful to our teachers. Apart from that, we should appreciate the Earth. The Earth is our home and our only home. So, why would we want to destroy, pollute, poison our only home? We are being ungrateful to the Earth. Why would we want to destroy the host that gave us this home and all these resources to live in. So, in order to save the Earth, we should be more eco-friendly. We should practice the three R's, recycle, reduce, and reuse. And don't tell me one's action doesn't make a difference. It's like a stone that made a ripple in still water. And just because it does make a difference, if we unite and try to save the Earth, it is very possible that we can do it. Oprah Winfrey once said, be grateful what you have, you'll end up having more. But if you concentrate on what you don't have, you'll never ever have enough. 
So, appreciate what you have. But if you really can't, appreciate what you have escaped, at the very least. Let's learn to say thank you more. It will make our lives more positive and the world a better place to live. Thank you for listening. Dede TV, KPM. Dede TV, KPM. A very good morning to the honorable panel of judges. Chicken or fish, bread or rice? What did you have for today? Well, I'm here today to share with you the topic of my speech and what we can learn from it, which is how to eat healthy. The foods you eat have a big effect on your health and quality of life. Although, eating healthy may be fairly simple, rising popular diets and dieting trends have caused confusion. In fact, these dieting trends often distract us from the basic nutrition principles that are most important. When one is thinking about what they are going to eat, most do not think about the essential nutrition that are in the food that they are craving. This is because eating healthy is actually one of the hardest things from the mind. Many of us do not know how to eat healthy, do not have the money to eat healthy, or simply do not have the time. Exactly how important is it to eat healthy? That's the question. Eating healthy helps to provide nutrition to your body. Nutrition helps to keep you active, your muscles moving, and your heart to beat correctly. There are three essential nutrition that are needed to help one's body function properly. Protein, fats, and carbohydrates. Each one of these nutrition has a different role in keeping our body working. Protein is essential for energy. It can also help to build and repair body cells. It is also part of various enzymes, hormones, and antibodies. Various meat, poultry, and fish are good sources for protein. Carbohydrates are excellent for red blood cells and brain functions. Good sources for carbohydrates are bread, rice, wheat, pasta, fruits, and veggies. Last but not to left out, we have fats. Provides energy. Good sources for fats are meat, poultry, fish, milk, milk products, nuts, and seeds. In addition to providing nutrition to your body, healthy eating can also help to prevent disease. According to medical websites 2005-2009, healthy foods can help to prevent and treat disease. Eating more fruits and vegetables as part of a heart-healthy diet may also help lower your blood pressure. Eating more fruits and veggies may also help lower your risk for lung, oral, esophageal, stomach, and colon cancer. Eating less saturated fat and sugar may also lower your risk for cancer and heart disease. Consequently, take small steps each week to improve your nutrition and move towards a healthier you. Small changes can make big differences. At the view from above, I hope you can take these 8 tips for healthy eating. 1. Base your meals on higher fiber, starchy carbohydrates. 2. Eat lots of fruit and vegetables. 3. Eat more fish, including a portion of oily fish. 
stores cut down on saturated fats and sugar. Five, eat less salt, no more than six grams a day. Six, get active and be a healthy weight. Seven, do not get thirsty. And eight, do not skip breakfast. To end my speech, let me just say, as much as we want to make healthy food choices, it can be hard for us to stick to a balanced diet when the ease and comfort of less virtual options that are all around us all the time. For motivation's sake, read and remember these two motivational quotes. Health is the real wealth not pieces of gold and silver by Mahatma Gandhi. The second one is a journey of a thousand miles begins with a single step by Lao Tzu. Thank you all and stay safe. DD TV KPM